What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host and captain and dad, Garrett Morlang. And here in the virtual studio with me is the king of video games himself, Adrian Holmes. What's going on, my boy? How you doing this evening? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? I'm all right. Can't complain. So we're not going to forget about it this week. We'll Let's do get it out right of the here. Way. Let's Top get out of the, the way. Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't want to. Don't want to lose it. Oh man, that's a perfect frame for my camera to freeze on. Wow, that is. Ah, don't worry about it. That's hot. Um, all you audio listeners are missing out there. Uh, so yes, JJ is not with us tonight. Um, I'll he, explain uh, why during the yeah. mailbag. Okay, you don't want to. You don't want me to share now. No, it's okay. Trust me. Okay. All righty. Well, he is not here. We'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> let Adrian tell the story <laughs> later. Uh, how's your week been, though? I, I, I remember been good. last, last week been you said good. you had a busy I, uh, week. Went to, a, went to an old, uh, a basically childhood friend's uh, wedding. Uh, that okay. was excellent. I was a groomsman in it. So, you know, I had to, we had to liven the party up, but we made it happen. Um, and then I went to go and see some other friends. So I was kind of on tour this last week. Um, I am dead tired, but I had a great time. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, was it like out of town wedding or was it local? Yeah, it was out of town. And then right after that, I came home to grab some clothes and then went right back out the next day. So dang. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had a similarly kind of tiring weekend it was a good weekend as well but just i don't know it's one of those things where <laughs> we got a uh i got i should speak for myself here uh very lazy the last year just due to covid you know being you know being at home all the time <laughs> uh-huh. it was really nice to just not ever have to do anything and then uh this weekend when it's like oh hey uh it's it was my son's birthday my oldest uh he turned four and uh we're like okay how do you like the mario uh, game by the way i remember you were saying you were gonna give it to him for his birthday yeah yeah so um i got him the the little game and watch uh mario edition one and he like lit right up he's like what for me my own game because he's he always refers to you know he loves to play my games can i play daddy's games can i play your Mm -hmm. games I'm like, yeah, yeah. So once in a while we'll play on the Switch. But um, yeah, I got him his own little and it's like the perfect size. And, you know, it's it's hard. It's a struggle. But oh, he, yeah. he, he gets he gets frustrated because he's still figuring out those buttons. You know, he's we were all there at one point. Oh, yeah. And he, he's still trying to figure out the multitasking thing. Like he can jump and he can move, but jumping and moving at the same time. He's like figuring out those the button combos. They're like, oh, how do I get over that pipe? And I'm like, oh, you got to jump and hit the, the 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 right button and he's like okay and he's like he'll, he'll like mess it up mess it up mess it up and then finally like shoom, he'll get it he just looks at me he's like oh, like so excited it's like the best the best thing ever to see his face when he finally gets he's like i did it i did it and then yeah. you know he runs over jumps on a couple goombas he's like i did it again <laughs> <laughs> oh, so don't good. worry young man you will learn in time just like your father and I and, and our fathers before us did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has no choice. No choice. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we had a we had a party on Saturday though. I had some had a couple couple friends over and uh man, yeah, between cooking and prepping and cleaning and setting up and tearing down. It's like, oh man. Yeah. By Sunday I was exhausted, but then Sunday we still wanted to like continue on kind of celebrating Shep. So uh we ended up doing stuff in the afternoon as well so sunday night i'm like i i'm dead i'm done <laughs> like oh man I'm, like, I'm, I'm looking over I'm at my ready. bed right now and i'm like Hoo wee. <laughs> yeah i'm ready to and, dive and in. then with the freaking time change i was like what a day right what a, what, what a weekend All in the same <laughs> week. like right now you had to do this you had to pull this <laughs> right now you couldn't wait till like next week <laughs> give me another week i beg you um so yeah uh good week Weekend, tiring weekend so i'm right there with you <laughs> a lot of fun but boy i'm ready for things to slow down now i'm ready to go back mm-hmm. and be like okay just hunker down and be quiet and be my introverted self and not talk to anyone for another like couple months you know <laughs> my social battery is out it is yes. done uh, i need to order another one because this one is so depleted 
Oh yeah, this was like like on your iPhone when it tells you like, oh, your battery is like actually damaged, like get it replaced. Like, yep, that's yeah, that's me right that's now. That's where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> I if you add a full charge, I'm only at about sixty percent. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, today we're going to be talking about the future of Smash Bros, the next Nintendo console, and uh, also what's Nintendo Nintendo doing with all that cash from the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I know you've all been wondering, hey, you're making some killer sales, which, by the way, didn't they, I feel like they just broke some other record, didn't they? That's 90 not, it's, million, baby. We're on it? our way to 100. Yes, sir. Isn't that crazy with the Nintendo Switch? How many? It's been around for four, almost four years now, right? It'll be four uh, years. Four and some change. In a couple of months, oh, it'll be five. Four. Okay. That's still so impressive. <laughs> That's so crazy. You know what I love to do, man? I know it's it's petty and, and it's vindictive, right? But I love going on YouTube and watching all the videos that are like from 2017. We're like, oh my God, this thing's going to flop. I can't believe, I don't know why anybody <laughs> would buy this. It's such a piece of trash. And just uh. watching them and just being like, oh, sir, ma'am, you don't know how wrong you are. You know, oh, that's the so greatest. Good. So good. But uh, yeah, what are they doing with all that cash? So we're going to find out more about that later. But first, let's give a quick shout out to our Patreon producers, Toby Dalton and quote Joma, uh, which I haven't heard from Kajoma in a while. Have you heard from him at all? I feel like he's been uh, he's been hiding yeah, out. He's, uh, he's popped in a couple times, said okay. what's up. Okay. He was, was here last sure. week at the very end, like he normally is, which he'll probably be tonight. <laughs> I just wasn't sure if we scared him away or something. Maybe we said something that kind of upset him. If, if that's the case, could you out? We're sorry. We're sorry. You just got to stop showing up late. Can't be late, Joma, no more. <laughs> Adrian's Adrian's not sorry. <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, and also shout out to our super gamer sponsors, Julie Bates and Mama Mare. Appreciate all of you support us. Uh, and as well as all you at the uh, the other tiers, the lower tiers there, the $5 and $1 level, we appreciate every little bit of support. So thankful for it. Helps us make this show awesome. Helps us, make super, you. helps us make Super Gamer Book Club, which is also available early to you guys over there on the Patreon feeds, which this last Friday, Cadence of Hyrule, the episode that we talk all about, that gem of a game with Trouser Schnauzer is up now again for Patreon supporters and for the free feed, which again, remember, it's two months behind. Uh, but if you don't mind uh, waiting a little bit, then uh, for free, the Hades episode with Boba Fletch just went up. And uh, let me tell you, that was a fun one, too. Every yeah. book club episode has been a blast to record. It's been, they've all been so much fun. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, fi find our, our free feed anywhere. You just type in Super Gamer Book Club on YouTube, on podcast services, and we're the only thing called that. <laughs> so you're only going to find us. Uh, or like I said, patreon.com slash supergamerboys to be like the, all, all the other awesome people who support us and get the episodes early uh, and ad free. Um, and uh, I don't know. Are, are you wanting to announce the, the next game slash guest now? Or are you wanting to hold off on it? So I'm still trying to nail things down with the guest. But we we're 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 doing a little bit more of a, a flagship for this month. Uh, so for the December book club, we are covering the modern day classic. In my opinion, the best of the three D series of of this character. We're looking at doing Super Mario Odyssey. Ooh, Super Mario Odyssey, baby. Okay. The 2017, in my opinion, 10 out of 10 classic. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I uh, definitely need to touch up on it. I, I, last I played it, it's a couple years back. I beat it. I did beat it. It is a game I beat. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to go back and uh, definitely play it. Cause I, yes. I, I gotta, I gotta know all the things for, for this next episode, but I'm excited because yeah, all yeah. the other games we've done have been like smaller indie deals. And so mm -hmm. this is like the first like big dog title big, that we're yeah, doing. This is the first big dog. <laughs> I kind of figure every few months it's nice to just throw a big dog one in there. I, you know, cause that's, that's, that's where the show came from was covering the big dog, the temple games. So yeah, it's nice to keep that tradition alive every so often. Yeah. Totally. All right, so, so when are we getting the Metal Gear? That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Keep your keep your eyes peeled. Keep your ears to the ground. You'll figure it out. <laughs> all right. Cool. 
So look forward to that uh, in the reveal of the host later this month. Uh, we will be talking about that, but uh, we'll talk more about our Patreon later on the show. Um, but right now, uh, it's time to check the mailbag. Okay, so now I can explain what happened. So, as we all know, uh, it is early November, which means that uh, good old Santa Claus is in testing stages for his uh, gift delivery systems. He right, is, right, right. you know, making sure everything works. Uh, he's exercising out the reindeer for uh, his sleigh. So I got a call from old Sandy Claus saying, hey, I need some heavy, uh, some heavy bags. And I hear you got a mailbag. And I say, oh, you know what, Sandy Claus? I do have a mailbag. Why don't you take this and put it on one of your reindeer? You can take it from uh, where you are. You could drop it off at Garrett's house. So he comes and he picks it up, puts it on the reindeer, and the reindeer just happens to make it all the way to Nebraska. Which is the wrong direction, by the way, but... <laughs> oh, no, he's coming from the East Coast. He's coming from the East Coast. Okay. So... I see, I see. The reindeer is on its way through Nebraska, and wouldn't you know who's coming down the freeway? Hmm. The I one, see. the I only. I see where this is going. I see where this is going. JJ Purdom. JJ Purdom. I see. JJ Purdom. <laughs> just, just, I mean, going 150 <laughs> miles an hour, just blow. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Probably takes faster. One of, takes one of Santa's reindeer right out. <laughs> all the letters from the mailbag, Garrett, just all gone. Scattered so we across have to the check, field. Scattered across the freeway. <laughs> oh, my God. Unreadable. Uh, to all you, so you uh, have to use the digital mailbox for this mailbox. week. Okay, that's that's too bad. Now, just to clarify, <laughs> Jay, this isn't a Tall Tales with JJ. That is a true story, though. JJ did in fact hit a deer. So uh, that's what you get for moving. We have this, picture. We have photo photographic evidence. Photographic evidence. <laughs> Um, he is okay. He was with his son. They totaled the car, so they're pretty shooken up. We already uh, talked to Santa. He's all right. He's like, it, it happens. Santa's good. I got a whole fleet. You know, it's unfortunate, yeah. but I got to press on. I got presents to deliver. So, yeah. But that's uh, where we're at. Yeah. So that's why there's no JJ, and that's why there's no no mailbag tonight. So bummer. Uh, I mean, there is, but it's digital. It's not as fun. You know, it's more fun to check a paper mailbag. So thanks, mm -hmm. JJ, for ruining something else in my life. Uh, all right. And setting well, back Christmas. What's that? I said in setting back Christmas. Exactly. Now, now Christmas is going to be like at least two weeks, at least two mm -hmm. weeks to push back. Mm -hmm. Sad. Sad, really. Um, this first question comes from Sweats. He says, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of studying come up and you can call me Sweats 38 CFP now. I don't know what oh. any of that means. What do, you, do you know what the CFP stands for? No, I just know it's probably a fancy title, so I was going to say congratulations. Oh, let's Google it. What's CFP? He is a... Oh, I, I don't know if this is actually what he is, but the first thing that popped up is certified financial planner. And if that's the yeah. case, maybe I need to hire him because let me tell you, <laughs> my, my yeah, finances look are at those all super over gamer the place. <laughs> um. So congrats, Sweats, on becoming a CFP, if that really is what you are, a certified financial planner. If not, if it stands for, like, I don't know, careful uh, fall performer, then you know what? Uh, I, I guess still congratulations, because I don't know what that is. Uh, but now that I can take my nose out of those books, I need to know, what game did you know that was going to be an absolute garbage fire pube pit. And it came out and it was that plus a thousand dead kittens. <laughs> but, you, but, you, but you still kind of liked it for some reason. Mine was Legion, the Legend of Excalibur. I love that game. It was bad. <laughs> you want me to go? I'll go first. Go ahead. Give it to me. So mine was definitely... And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've always had fun with those games. Uh, is um, Crackdown Three? Mm, okay. Crackdown Three is absolute garbage. <laughs> but <laughs> but there's something about running around the city, gunning dudes down, and basically having superpowers, 
and your your you and your weapons level up as you level up. That crackdown, that part of the formula is still there. It's just everything else around it is awful. <laughs> But I still found a way to have a good time. So that would probably be my pick for for that answer to that question. Okay. Um, for me, I I went through, I, I actually started going through like years and years and years and years of games. I was just like, because ah, nothing like came to my mind. And then... And then it and then it did. Like I was went through lists and lists and lists, and I couldn't find anything, couldn't find it. Like nothing stirred my memory. And then it hit me. There was this game, PlayStation 2, if I remember correctly. I actually should have looked it up just to double check. I'm pretty sure it's PS2. Uh yes. Oh yes, here it is. Uh 2003 PS2 GameCube and Xbox. I played on the PS2. It is the hobbit but it was not based off of the movies um as far as i understand it was off the books right based right off the books um made by sierra uh sierra games so the same company that also has made like if i remember do they do not age of empires what is it um they do one of those like rts one of those rts games for pc or whatever um but yeah it was very bad, very bizarre. Uh, <laughs> not not a good game. Um, and as far as I remember, not really thought of it as a good game. But uh, yeah, I still very much enjoyed it for whatever reason. And I think it was probably just because around that time, I mean, Lord of the Rings was coming out, the movies were. And even though this isn't attached to the movies at all, it's completely its own separate thing. They were absolutely oh, riding that wave, though. hundred percent. I was like so into it. I'm like, oh, I got to get in on this. And it was it was not good. There were so many things that were janky and bad about it. Uh, and to be honest, the, half the levels were like so impossible to get through. I don't know if I ever finished <laughs> it. I got like halfway through and I think I got stuck on up some puzzle. I'm like, eh, I guess I'll never finish. That's this the thing with those shovelware it. games, though. There's no they don't have the budget for anybody to, to QA test it. So yeah, it's just like they, they build it and then they're like, OK, they don't want you to finish it. <laughs> yeah, we made it through that level one time, one way. So I guess everybody can do it that same way. Yeah, that's all they yeah. got. So that's that's my game. The Hobbit on PS2. Again, the, based off like the books, but it was it was not great. Not a great game. Um, thank you, Switch, for writing in. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're back. I hope to hear more from you. You always have the most interesting Good to see questions. You, the most interesting questions for sure. Uh, Sir Prince a lot comes in with a, with a an interesting one here. One generation of Xbox or PlayStation never existed, so neither did any of its games. Which one would you have been okay with losing out on? Keep in mind that might mean that some games never get made, such as you know sequels that we saw later in the generation, or maybe now on PS Five, Xbox Series X. Uh, that's definitely Xbox One, for sure. If if we're looking in the grand scheme of console libraries uh i mean just on xbox alone you have original xbox library full of bangers 360 was that's when it was at its strongest it was heck yeah untouchable at that point and now i mean granted you could you can make a case for the series generation because there's not much out but there's not much out for any new next gen console at this point but even if we just went between those three I mean, you, it doesn't stack up at all. Xbox One doesn't stack up against 360 or original Xbox at all. There's yeah, there's a few good exclusives in there, but as a whole library, you can just throw it out. Let's just be real. Yeah, I I hundred percent agree with that. I I thought through everything as well. It's like uh, Xbox, like the original Xbox. There was a couple games. So for me, like the well, the first thing that popped in my head was. Uh, Splinter Cell was an, originally an Xbox game and then came to PlayStation 2 later. And so I was like, oh, man, we want to get Splinter Cell series. OK, can't cut out Xbox uh, 360. That's I only had a 360. I didn't have a PS3 until 20 years, 15 or Call whatever. So I had I was an Xbox 360 boy until about 2014, 2015. And when my <laughs> I finally upgraded to a to a PS3. Um Got my cousin's PS3 hand me down. So 
yeah, there's no way you can get rid of 360. Uh, and then uh, for me, PlayStation was out of the question. You can't get rid of any of the, any of the generations because for me, yeah, they all got some some they, crazy ones. Every one of the generations has some has has a gem that I could not live without. And I mean, especially <laughs> Metal Gear, like is on every generation one, two, and three. Like if I missed out on any of those, it'd be so sad. On top of like. The millions of other games that I've talked about over the last you know three years of this podcast, you've heard me talk about. So yeah, I could never get rid of a PlayStation generation. I think I. What's I'd so weird die. to me <laughs> is that is that I cherish PS2 the most out of the five of them right now, but my largest library is my PS3 library, mm. by far. Wow. I don't know what it was about that system, but I was, I think. The only things I remember playing for sure on 360 was Gears, Halo, and um, didn't Forza Horizon start on 360? I think so. I don't know if I don't think I ever played it though. You know what I played on 360? Racing game, Project Gotham Racing. Project Gotham. Oh, <laughs> PGR man. man. Uh, I haven't thought game. about Project Gotham in a cool minute. <laughs> that was that was a good game. That was a fun game. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, so, PS. All the all the PlayStation generations have too many, um, too many good, fantastic games, games in them. Yeah, um, and and even in just like series that like say yeah, you got your the PS3 generation, Uncharted gone. Like <laughs> Last of Us, gone. Last of Us gone. It's like okay, no, it can't do that. So <laughs> definitely Xbox One. Sorry, you just I I googled. I actually earlier I was like Xbox One exclusives because that's that's really what it all comes down to as well is like okay what are the exclusives that we would miss out on and i was like i other than like the last couple of halos four and five is like mm, okay <laughs> like whatever that wasn't I, even in that which, was that was 360 really mm-hmm okay four was 360 okay all right like, so it's google, just five which think, everybody think google is, is wrong <laughs> yeah. right yeah. five uh, five is mid at best so yeah. So yeah, I, I, I was I mean, looking through it and I was just like, yeah, 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 a couple of Gears 4 and Gears 5, right? That's the newest one that just came out. Uh, like 5 was on Siri. Oh no, four, 5 was on on 1. Yeah, cuz that, that came so out yeah, like 2019. So yeah, Gears 4 and 5 will probably be the biggest casualties, which is unfortunate because they are very good. But as a whole for the generation like we were saying, if you have to count the entire generation, they got to go. It all got to yeah. go. Yeah, I would not be and like I feel like what what made the Xbox One generation so great wasn't the exclusives that came out on it. It was the so I guess what we have to discuss now though does that also affect some of the services that came out of that? Because without without Xbox being in that in that pit <laughs> in that hole, would they have ever pushed their R and D department to actually create like X Cloud and the backwards compatibility and all this stuff that they have now? Do you think? Game Pass as it is today would exist without the hole they they had dug for themselves in the Xbox One generation. That's tough to say because for that to take effect, you would have to assume that everything else was still moving to subscription services the way that it would in the same trajectory, right? There's no way to make to know for certain that Netflix is was going to be as big now as it is than at the beginning of the Xbox One generation. Granted, it was already pretty big then, but it's Cause it's I, cause enormous I feel like, now. I feel like a lot of the push for Game Pass and all of these other amazing things from Xbox that it, they have now is because like they were desperate. <laughs> well, like, A, they were desperate, and B, <laughs> they were seeing how effective subscription services are. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. So if subscription services continue to get as big as they are now, then I think we definitely would have seen Xbox throw their hat into the ring for something. It probably wouldn't have been as heavy handed an effort as Game Pass or Cloud X Cloud is, but they would have been stupid as a software company to not have some kind of solution for that. Mm. Um, I don't think console wise we would have had the same uh, as hard of a need for a turnaround or a need for a goodwill because if they would have actually sat down and not made a console that was basically built to be a tv tuner if they made a console to be a console i feel like we would be in a, in a much different space than we are right now where pretty much playstation is dominating the 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 
console mind share at this point, right? Mm -hmm. But think mm -hmm. about when 360 came out and when it was going head to head with PS3. That was, you know, that was Sega Genesis Super Nintendo levels of competition right there. So imagine yeah. if they would have kept that going to see if they were still as game focused as they were with 360 and uh, original Xbox. We probably would be in a totally different state of the gaming landscape right now. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah, that's that's an issue. I, I like that question, Sir Prince, a lot. Thanks for that one. That, that, was, that, was, that was kind yeah. of fun. I mean, there's an alternate universe out there, right, where that happened. I would love to see how it went down. You know, did did Xbox end up winning out? Did did they did they fuse together and make a super company? You know? Oh man. Who knows? The, so the Sony Xbox. <laughs> you laugh, you joke, but <laughs> somewhere out there it exists. Somewhere out there, also the Sony Nintendo exists as well. well <laughs> or the, or the Nintendo, Nintendo PlayStation until, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it was gonna exist on, in ours until Nintendo did some shady stuff, but that's <laughs> that's a discussion for another time. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get in the next question. This one comes from Normcore Eddie, and he asked, What is the undisputed greatest Mario Party minigame of all time? Yeah. So this one was That's a little tough. tricky for me. This one was tricky for me because I don't have the history that like Eddie has and that you have. My experience started with Super Mario Party on Nintendo Switch. I had in the past played on like a GameCube at like a friend's house, a cousin, my cousin's house, someone's house. I don't even remember whose house it was at. I went to someone's house in the 2000s and played a GameCube with Mario Party. I don't remember which one it was. And I remember thinking, oh. Huh, this is all right. And then moving on, never like going back. So my history is very new. So what do you, what do you want me to give my thoughts? Cause I do have a couple thoughts or do you want to give? Yeah, go ahead. Stars? You okay. can even throw out honorable mentions if you got some. All right. So I, I, I came up with two, my two favorite ones that I've experienced so far. Again, this is like beginners, uh, my beginner's journey here. Uh, and you're probably going to laugh at me and be like, Dude, that's those are the dumbest answers. <laughs> no, go for it. So the first one is from Super Mario Party. Uh, and I really, really love sizzling steaks. The one where you have to that's cook a good the steak. One. That's a good one. I love that one so much. I'm just, like really good at it. And it's such a blast. And it uses the Wiimote. Not the Wemo. I'm an idiot. The Joy-Con, uh, in a, such a cool way where I, like it uses the motion gyroscope and everything, where you're like controlling the the frying plan pan and you know flipping the the meat and stuff like that. The steak in there, that one's tons of fun. I really enjoy that one. My second one is actually I played it for the first time the other night on Mario Party Superstars, which by the way. We need to do a stream sometime, get, get some of the crew together. So I'm in Norm, Norm Coretti, Steph out there, anyone out there who's listening, Trouser, I don't know. Who, who's, if you think you got what it takes. Anyone out there who uh, listens to our show who, to us. who wants to play some Mario Party with us, let us know because we want to do a, we want to do a community stream. It'd be fun. Uh, if this you want to get your star stole, step up. Uh, originally from Mario Party 3, I looked it up. Because I played it on Superstars, but it's really from Mario Party 3. It is Snowball Summit. Oh, okay. Okay. So, That's a good one. And again, I think the idea, if I remember right, I only played it the one time, but you're you're basically just making a snowball and the snowball's getting bigger and bigger and you're pushing people yep. off the edges of the snowball. So, yeah, it's fun. That's a crazy one. All right. Mario Party Guru, what do you got? All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shout out three of the the top three, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you which one is the most Mario Party out of all of them. Okay. Okay. So the big three are, let's do uh, the first one. Let's do Bowser's Big Blast. That's the one. I don't know if you played it. There's a giant Bowser head that is housing a bomb. And there are five switches, five levers. Like, you know how when you did Dynamite and you have to press the little plunger? There's right. five of those out in front of the, the Bowser head. Hmm. And each player has to go up and pick a plunger because all five, one of the five of them is rigged to blow up the bomb. And the rest <laughs> of them are fakes. That sounds awesome. So, so you have to go up and you have to <laughs> hit your plunger of choice. And then it just it goes dead silent. 
and it just waits to see, oh, is it just a puff of smoke out of his nose or is it about to start counting down to the bomb? And you have to keep going until somebody picks one. Oh, no. And you have to keep doing it over and over because one person gets eliminated, then they take a switch away. Now, instead of five, there's four. And then instead of four, there's three. And it keeps going like that until somebody wins. That's one of them. <laughs> okay. The second one, of course, is hot rope jump. That is where a bunch of flames, uh, the little flame creatures are connected into a jump rope. And your the objective of the game uh, is to survive the longest by jumping over the rope as many times as you can. Well, of course, you know, being Mario Party, it's not that easy. So the rope gets taller because the flames get bigger and it varies its speed in between different jumps. So you can have a regular jump, then fast jump, fast jump, fast jump, slow jump, fast jump, fast jump, oh, regular man, that speed. That sounds horrible. It's incredible. <laughs> it's so good. I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten past like 99 jumps because I refused to lose on that game. Um, oh my gosh. And then of course, if we're representing Mario Party as a whole, the last one, and I think which is the best one, would have to be Shy Guy Says. That's the one where it's four people and you're each holding flags, right? So you have a flag in your left hand, you have a flag in your right hand, and there's a Shy Guy in front of all of you. And when he puts up a flag, you have to copy which flag he puts up. Hmm. Same thing with his other hand, right? And you have to do it within a certain time limit, otherwise he's going to shoot whatever craft you're in or you, the balloons on your back and you're going to fall, you're out. Hmm. The trick is, is that it goes faster and faster and the shy guy can actually trick you <laughs> into pulling the wrong one. So he'll have his hand, his flags. He'll put one up, put one down and put one up again. So he'll do like that and switch them. And you have uh, to make sure that you pick the right one or else you lose. And it dirty. goes faster and faster until somebody... <laughs> it, it is dirty. That's Mario Party. That's how it goes. It's, <laughs> Mario Party 1, 2, and 3 are cutthroat, dude. I'm uh, telling you. They bring out the they bring out the competitive monster in people who you would never suspect to have one. Oh, um, I, no, yeah. I, I know that. Yeah, we, we just played... <laughs> so Super Mario... Or, you know, Mario Party Superstar is the one that just came out last week, right? Uh, my wife... Or a couple weeks ago now... My wife and I played around just a short little like 10 round took us about 30, 45 minutes or so. And, uh, oh man, we, neither one of us are super competitive, especially her. She's like, or so you thought, oh man, there's a couple, a couple times where it was getting heated. I'm like, oh no, are we about to fire right now? Are we about to fight? Like, is this (laughs) it? Like uh, we were sitting, uh, you know, the, the, the wonders of the switch we were playing in bed, like it was sitting on, we had like a little pillow set up with the switch sitting on there. And then, uh, and then, you know, we were just sitting uh, up against the wall playing. And I'm like, am I, do I have to leave? Do I need to go sleep on the couch tonight? Like I'm already in bed, but I'll leave, I guess. Over Mario (laughs) party, man. That's how you know. Oh man, it's getting heated. It's getting heated. But yeah, but. those are those are the definitely the top three that if I had to explain to somebody what Mario Party mini games are, it'd be those. But yeah, Shy Guy says is definitely the best one, undisputed. That is awesome. Oh, thanks, thanks for that. We got to, glad we got the professional here. Glad we got a pro. What here. I do. Um. All right. This next question comes from Boba Fletch, and he asks, "What?" are the top five marvel movies so adrian what would be your Ready? top five give them to me in game guardians one in mm. game guardians one there's a lot more marvel movies than i remember uh there are, there are a lot of them yes <laughs> Iron Man 1, Avengers, Black Panther. Okay. Uh, For me, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Endgame. Uh, Guardians. For me, it's hard to. Uh, it, was always, it was always hard to pick between one and two, and I don't want it to take up two slots in my top right. five. So maybe I'll go with 
two. Okay. Uh, let's see what it was. I had Thor Ragnarok. I had Endgame, Guardians two, Black Panther, and uh, I was <sighs> no cap really. I know they're all so good. You know what? I really really love Ant Man. So good. Wow. Ant Man's really No, not good. a bad wow, but I just was not expecting Ant Man <laughs> out of you. That's that's so I was I, I was for sure like, oh, he's gonna say Civil War, he's gonna say Winter Soldier. <laughs> One of those two is coming. No, I I I really like Paul Rudd. He's a fantastic actor. He's I great. love his I love his humor. I love the humor of uh um oh what's his name? It was also in there. Michael Pena, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's hilarious. I love him. He's so good. So, yeah, Ant-Man would be number five. Uh, dude, but Thor Ragnarok. I, I like all the funny ones. Thor Ragnarok, Guardians 2, you know. I love all of them, <laughs> but he just asked yeah. for a top five, so. Yeah, no, there you go. There's even, my quick, you know my what? quick top five. I'll even say that at some, I can see the overall where they were trying to go with Thor, or not Thor Ragnarok, Thor Dark World. It just didn't execute like it was supposed to, but I definitely can see the skeleton of what they were trying to get done. I'll give it that. Yeah. I need to rewatch Dark World because I think I saw it in theaters when it came out, and that's the it's, only time I've ever watched it. It's not as awful as everybody says that it is, but it's definitely not anywhere, yeah. you know, near the top. Yeah, what? Well, that came out in 2013. I haven't rewatched it since then. Mm-hmm. So it's been, you know, eight years or whatever, uh, and I haven't touched it. So. Maybe I need to rewatch that because yeah, I did the same thing with Iron Man 2. I feel like a lot of people kind of hate on that one sometimes. I'm like, no, oh, this wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of a fun movie. No, it I wasn't. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Not that bad. I want my bird. I want my bird. <laughs> All right. Last question comes from Nerd Dad Zetch. Rest in peace. Uh, and he asks us, Square Enix admits that Marvel Avengers was a fail. They did actually just come out this last week. And they're like, hey. Not up to snuff. Uh, He asked, if you were to industry quarterback the launch of this game, the development of this game, what would you have done differently to make it successful? You want to go first? I'll go first. Uh, So there's a lot of things wrong with this game, but uh, there's two things that immediately came to mind. The first one for me is content uh, that they had planned <laughs> was not uh, not not consistent and quick enough. I feel like um, again, I haven't really played this game. <sighs> have I played? I feel like I might have played like at, at, for a, in a beta, but I don't think I ever played the full release. Um, the content, though, from what I've heard from a lot of other people, though, they took way too long, way too little. Like what, what? PlayStation users are only just getting Spider Man. It's like they, that's and something it's they should have gotten. Them. And it's only on PlayStation. So if like you it, bought Xbox or PC, you basically bought a version for the same price with less content. Yeah, which is yeah. whack, crazy. So content need to be quicker, more consistent, and just yeah, upfront. And then the second thing is, and this is totally bizarre. Is I mean, it was already a live service game. But they actually did an update that nerfed your experience, like how how you uh, collect experience in the game. So it actually slowed it down. It they slowed down progression, and in the same update, added microtransactions to where you could buy boosters to speed up your experience progression. It's like, are you kidding me? Literally what (laughs) they said they were not going to do, they did. We promise we will not do this. And then like a few months later, they're like, we're doing this. We're hurting for cash, guys. Yeah, they they slowed down experience progression and put out those net nasty micro like they already had microtransactions in the game, so it's like okay, whatever. You buy skins, buy whatever. That's cool. But when it actually when it makes it almost not pay to win, but if you want to like pay to hurry up the game because it takes you know five times longer to beat this game now or whatever it was like oh man that's dirty that's messed up so don't do that microtransactions are already like predatory enough and then making it so if you want to like beat this game in a reasonable amount of time without grinding for hours and hours and hours and hours that's even dirtier so don't and do maybe that. don't don't lie about it yeah yeah that too <laughs> oh man 
yeah, that this that whole game it came to it's on Game Pass now. So I've been tempted a couple times just to fire it up on PC just to it's see. It's free, and I still do not want to yeah, play it. And I still haven't. <laughs> I I mean I I say that I feel I'm like I'm tempted to, but I haven't. It's literally free. I just had to click install, and I would have it, and I haven't done it. So that just goes to show how bad and scared I am of it. <laughs> how bad the game is. Uh, I don't. I don't know how if there's much more they could really do though. Even if they fix those things, like the message from the beginning was messed up because I feel like even at the beginning, it wasn't. Well, early on, it wasn't clear that it was even live service. A lot of people assumed, oh, it's going to be like a co-op, like a story, story driven type thing. And it's like, oh, right, because no, we were hot is... off the heels of Spider Man. Exactly. Everyone's thinking Spider Man, and then like this this Avengers thing came out of nowhere. What by Square Enix? Oh man, that sounds cool. That sounds crazy. I wonder by what the this Tomb Raider be. people. Yo, hold on. Yeah, and then uh, that first trailer. Well, that first trailer when like the voices and then the way they looked were so off putting. That's everyone's, that's one of mine. Because because everyone's like used to like the Marvel movies. And TV mm-hmm. shows, and so then to jump into like, oh, it's the Avengers, but it's not. It's it's like the meme, like, mom, I want the Avengers, and then it's great like, value no, Avengers. We, yeah, we we have Avengers at home. Avengers at home. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that that's what it felt like. And I've I've come around to it. it's like you know they want to make their own original thing. I can respect that. Guardians is doing it. Spider Man. I mean, Spider Man did it too. Spider Man. They didn't pick Peter Parker. Um, or from uh, like the new Homecoming movies and stuff like that, or whatever. Is that was No Way Home. I don't know. They have weird names, but uh, yeah, that movie there, that game was just all sorts of craziness. So feel bad for him. Do you, is there anything else that you would say that they should yes. have done to fix that? The biggest thing that I would have done, um, and I guess it's kind of like a pushback on on what you said. I feel like you can do those liberties with Spider-Man and guardians and stuff like that, because even if they are, uh, well executed as they were now that we know, you know, they're, they're good games. Um, they're still not as world shatteringly popular as the Avengers are. I feel like they could have gotten the actual cast to come back and to do this game, but you could just do it as a what if story or an else world mm. story, right? Because we right. literally got a what if series. So this doesn't have to be canon. It could be those characters that cast in a totally different story. Why right. was that not presented? You know what I mean? Like if they have the Marvel license, I don't understand why Marvel couldn't have been like, yo, let's just have, you know, put it on the table. Hey, uh, you guys want to do this game? You know, it's already we've already got you, you know, contracted out for the next 80 billion years. Of your, we own you, basically. So why not have them to do that game? If it was going to be as monumental as the teaser trailers and the way that Spider-Man, we got the scale of what that was. You know, if it was going to be that big, they should have gone all out and they should have gotten the cast. They should have yeah. gotten the cast of the films. Yeah. Granted, yeah, I know that, that, you know, there's a lot of red tape because there's likenesses and stuff like that, but that's already settled in the contract with Marvel because I'm pretty sure in Disney, I'm pretty sure there's a there's a clause in there where it's like we can use your likeness for whatever we want to do, Playboy. Oh, yeah, so, I'm sure. I'm sure they have that all over the place. But right. And um, that's that's not to disrespect, you know, um, any of the actors who were who were, uh, you know, already on the project now. But right. Hindsight is always 2020. And I really think that they should have gone with that move. I think that would have helped mm-hmm. out a lot. Um, I know it's tough because now you have to be like, well, what, what if we need DLC lines? What if we need, you know, what if we want to do extra dialogue? What if we want to do new campaigns? That's stuff you got to worry about. But if you have Disney and Marvel backing it, uh, that, they'll that, figure that, that it makes out. it easy. Yeah, that makes it easier right. when the big boys can go do the work for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. That would that would probably be my biggest gripe. That that's the thing that I know turned me off the most. That and it being a live service game yeah. is the second I saw, oh, oh, these don't look anything like like the ones we're all used to. This, that that kind of <laughs> took all the wind out of my sails, man. I'm I'm yeah. just being honest. <laughs> yeah, it was it was strange. It was definitely strange. 
Um, and I'm all for making characters look different, but you are using the same movie Avengers logo, the same right. you know types of suits that we see in the movies, and then on, finally all the smoke clears, and that looks nothing like Chris Evans. Come on now, yeah. come on now. Uh, yeah, it was it. Like I said, like I mean, I already said it, but it's it's like. It's like the the, yeah, the great value kind of <laughs> like the yeah, the, the Avengers really at home that we have at home. It's like, oof, again, like the voice actors are great, but it's like the likenesses, the faces that they use even are just like, ooh, this is a little janky. And those didn't even look, the the, the the replacement ones or the alternate ones didn't even look good. They had to go back and fix them again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not great. All right. Cool. Well, that's it for Mailbag. Thank you all so much for writing in. Remember, if you have questions you want us to answer here on the show, Go over to uh, pretty much anywhere. Social media, you can find one of our Super Gamer Boys channels. You can DM us there. Uh, or if you are over on our Discord, uh, which you should join us, supergamerboys.com slash Discord. And you can join that where we chat all throughout the week, talk about what we're playing, what we're watching. Uh, you can come watch me smoke everyone in the backlog challenge. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. But now it is time. For the nerdy nudes. It's now time for the nerdy nudes. Perfect. All right. So this wait, is wait, a- let me do it again. Oh, okay. It's okay. now time for the nerdy new Whoa, it's a deer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Freaking JJ. Freaking JJ. Oh, uh, he'll never hear that. Yeah, it's too deep in the episode. Yeah, we know he listens to like the first five <laughs> minutes and like the last five or ten minutes, maybe if we're lucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, he'll watch the TikTok later. What they made fun of me? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys! No, he actually called me right after he texted us. He gave me a call. He just kind of filling me in on what happened. He's like, he's like, dude. He's like, do what you want with it. Make a joke out of it. <laughs> Build it up, make it crazy, have fun with it. I'm like, oh, you don't have to worry about that. Oh, <laughs> don't you worry about that, don't good sir. Don't you worry, don't you worry. Oh, man. All right, this first news story, I, just to be upfront with all of you, I mean, you already know you were here at the top of the show, but this is a Nintendo rock it's block Nintendo here. Nintendo day. Uh, there, there was other news last week, but I was telling Adrian beforehand, I'm like, nothing like slapped me in the face. Everything was just kind of like, yeah. Okay, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> so, this is what we're doing. I and I mean, not to say that this is not fun news, because it's still very interesting, fun stuff. But it was just, uh, yeah, we're getting to the time of year where the news is starting to to slow down a little bit. Like a lot of the big releases are out, uh, mm-hmm. and especially like with Game Awards coming up. Once that happens, like there's nothing for usually a good month or two. <laughs> so it's like, oh, we're we're, we're on the descent here. <laughs> Shame on you all for not buying WarioWare. It didn't even uh, break a million copies. What? Um, yeah, I didn't yeah. see so, that. Okay, we're stopping. If we don't the get show. any more. It's all you guys' fault. I just want to make sure that that's known. <sighs> if if WarioWare is not at the top of the charts next month, we're canceling Super Gamer Boys that's forever. It. That's it. We're yeah, out of here. We're done. We're just not coming back in in uh, in December. So if the end of this month, November, it's not the top of the chart. You can forget about it. 2022, no more Super Gamer Boys. We're done. Shutting it down. Super Goner Boys. Yep. This first news story comes from VGC, written by Andy Robinson. He writes, Smash Bros. director Sakurai says he's undecided if he'll make another. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Director Mas- Masahiro Sakurai has said he's undecided if he'll make another entry now that the Switch installment's generous DLC schedule is complete. Last month, Ultimate's final DLC character Sora from the Kingdom Hearts series was released. This marked the completion of nearly three years of DLC for the fighter, uh, which has seen 11 new characters added to the game. This week, Japanese magazine Famitsu has published a special interview with series lead Sakurai, in which the creator reflects on the lengthy development of Ultimate and answers questions about his future. In early excerpts co- published by Ryu Kutia 2089, Sakurai reveals that he's unsure if he'll continue with the Smash Bros. series beyond Ultimate, which eventually became so large that he previously claimed there was no way the series could ever be as big again. 
I'm not thinking about a sequel, Sakurai told Famitsu, but I can't say that this is definitely the last Smash Bros. <laughs> Don't say that, Sakurai. Don't do that to yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying he's going to retire, and then but then he says stuff like that. I can't say. But so. I, you know what? It might be another one. No. <laughs> he added, I need to think about whether we should release another Smash Bros. game at the risk of disappointing the users. Later, no. in the interview, later in the interview, Sakurai reportedly told the publication that he did not believe that Smash Bros. series could continue without his involvement. I can't see any way to produce Smash Bros. without me, he said. To be honest, I'd like to leave it to someone else, and I've actually tried that, but it hasn't worked out. He continued, if we're going to continue with the series, Nintendo and I need to discuss and seriously consider how to make it a success. This week's Famitsu column is Sakurai's last for the publication. The game designer has penned his column since the early 2000s despite deciding to end his contribution. He recently said the decision did not mean he would stop making games in the future. Smash Bros. director has discussed his punishing work-life balance many times in the past, including claims that he would use an IV drip and go to work like normal during the development of Ultimate to avoid taking time off. Insane. Last, isn't that crazy? He's like, eh, I don't have enough time for breakfast. I'll just hook up to an IV and just keep working. I'm dehydrated to the point of <laughs> near death, but you know what? That DLC's got to get out. Oh my gosh. Last year, the designer said in a column that he passed out during a trip to the gym because he was tired and dehydrated. During a 2019 interview with Nintendo Dream, Sakurai claimed that he had, however, taken some action to improve his working conditions during the development of Ultimate. I made some changes from what I used to do compared to now. For example, as a principal, I always left the office by 10 p.m. no matter what. But what time did you get there? <laughs> what That's the, the heck? 10 p.m.? Many companies are discouraging extreme overtime these days, too, he said. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This guy's insane. You know that, right? Like he is actually I leave, crazy. <laughs> I leave the like, office by 10 p.m. and then I clock back in by 10 30 p.m. That's yeah. what happened. He clocks out for lunch at 10 30. Right. You know, takes a little, a little five minute nap and then he's like, he's good to go. <laughs> right. This is wild. This, I can't believe. So I honestly, and this is coming from somebody who's been playing smash for 20 some odd years now at this point careful what you say here you're gonna have a lot of haters that's fine <laughs> i think this is the perfect this is the perfect installation or in, installment moment in the timeline to to put it to bed <gasps> i think i think <laughs> this is there's there's two ways you can go with this you can take this platform and keep adding to it, or you can blow Smash Brothers up and start again from from ground zero and make it something completely not completely different. Of course, you have to have the core gameplay, but maybe a different starting roster, different characters that you know weren't originally there, or different move sets for the core characters that who who have been there. You have to do something either drastically different or just keep adding on to ultimate, right? I I yeah. cannot see anywhere else for this series to go. Either you got to do one of those two or you just let it rest and you just keep re-releasing ultimate as you go forward on platforms, maybe with a new character every time or a new stage every time or a new this or that. But if, if Sakurai is even like, man, I don't even know if I should make another one. That's kind of a sign to be like, you know what? Maybe we should sit down and take a look at this and think, hmm, are we done? Have we gotten all we can get out of this? Of course, as a company, they're going to say no because that's leaving money on the table. But yeah, as a franchise, he even said, what if I make another one and people think it's whack and then I shouldn't have made it in the first place? So you got to right. think about those things. But me personally, I feel like this is the perfect place to 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 sunset smash and let it let it rest. Yeah, I I agree with that. I think, and I think going to what you said with like uh, it being more of like a what's the word I'm looking for? I almost said live service game. It's not what I'm looking for, but a platform, so, but something. Yeah, where they just kind of continue it from here on out, where it is like a a Minecraft or a Fortnite or whatever, where it's just it's basically the same thing for the last 10 years, uh, but they just keep adding to it and updating things and changing things and tweaking things. I think, 
I think that would be the best way to go because 100%, like, I don't think they could ever make another Smash Brothers game. Um, if Sakurai isn't involved, I don't think it, it, it could live up to it. Like, and again, not to say it's going to be bad, but I think it could, it could, it has a potential to be very different. Um, right. I mean, it has a potential to, I think it's either going to be bad or very different. It's, it's one of those options. I don't know if it's just going to be good and the same. Like, I think if they try to do the same thing, but with another person directing, producing, whatever, um, yeah, it's going to be like, oh, this is not, this is like leaving a weird taste in my mouth. I don't know. It's like something's not right here. So I, I think it would have to be like a platform where it's just like, okay, from here on out, it's just going to keep getting upgraded for every system, you know, HD remasters of basically of it, <laughs> uh, kind of like what they've done with uh, Grand Theft Auto V and uh, just keep reviving it, but adding, you know, yeah, new characters. Okay, who's now, you know, every, and again, don't turn it into like a, a character pass thing, game pass, not game pass, but, uh, you know, where you have to put out six new characters in the next year. Like that's, that's a lot of stress. Right. Like I think they could easily do like, Oh, and, and they're going to run out characters quick. I think they could easily be like, okay, maybe every like year they put year? out like maybe, maybe one or two characters or something like that. You know, one in the spring, one in the fall, All right, give us those two new characters every year or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm right there with you. I don't. It's tough. It's a tough. It's a tough decision to make. Yeah, I would love to see him make like something else. Has he has he made any other games than Smash Brothers, or has that been his thing uh, for the last did, like um, twenty years? No, he he did the 3ds, uh, the Kid Icarus. Okay. Um. Oh my God. Why can I not remember the name of the whole name of it? But it was a, the Kid Icarus that came out for for 3ds. He he headline development on that one. Okay. Um. I don't yeah. think he's done anything since that. Hmm. Yeah, because like, I directed be, a game. I'd be interested, to, like, to, to see him make anything else. Uh, I'm sure he'd be interested to see him make <laughs> anything else too. <laughs> Let's see. So he has. So this is working, going in uh, uprising. There it is in uh, reverse order. So Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, Smash Bros for 3DS and Wii U, Kid Icarus, Uprising, Smash Brothers Brawl. M Mushy King, the King of Beetles. What Sounds like a Japan only joint. It's an arcade game and collectible card game. Interesting. Uh, Medios. Oh, uh, Medios. Yeah, he did that. 2005. Uh, 2004, he had Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, Kirby Air Ride, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Kirby 64. He, he was heavy in the Kirby in the early days. Well, he, he created Kirby. Oh, how did I not know that? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I did not know That's that. why Kirby's at the center of all the Smash Brothers stuff. That makes so much sense. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know how I did not know that. Uh, but yeah, so, but other than, yeah, those, what, Medios and Kid Icarus, he hasn't really done much last 20 years. So give him something else to do. That'd be awesome. Let him make another, Kirk. I hope that he was involved in that new one that's coming out. Oh, he better be. Is he? I feel like he has to be a little bit. They right? had to at least ask him what's, or run something by him. What's like, the hey, name what of that? The Lost, uh, the Forgotten, World, Forgotten Land, Lost. Forgotten City, something like that. Forgotten Land. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is the the episode where we Google things because <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I want to know. I was like, this is. We need to do that, our research. Yeah, that would be so cool if he was actually like part of it. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. Yeah, he's um, probably too busy with Smash. But yeah. I, I, I cannot imagine that they did a Kirby project of that size and didn't at least be like, hey, you want to check out what we're doing? And maybe he gave oh, notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, he's he's not popping up anywhere, but there's not very much information on this game because it was only just announced, but Still can't hopefully. wait for it. Oh, dude, that new Kirby game looks really good. So good, I can't yeah. wait. It looks it it looks like Mario Odyssey, but with Kirby. And Mario Odyssey was amazing, and Kirby's okay. amazing. So mash both those together. Um, but yeah, so there we go. <laughs> that, that the Super Gamer Boy census is don't make another Smash Brothers game. Don't don't do it. Like it's not worth it. Like, this is the top of the mountain. This is we. I I don't think you could add anything more on it. I don't even think you could add more to make it even better. It's pretty amazing as it is. Like yeah, it's always fun to have more characters. 
but do you need more characters? No. Right. No. You this don't want to pretty... get it to a point where it's hard to find anybody on the board. Right. Because it's already getting tough now. So Yeah. When you see all like the little tiny squares, like a hundred of them. Right. It's all like... 90 something of them. It's like, good. Green. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. So thanks, Zachary, for all the work you've done. Now go rest and maybe give us another Kirby game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill yourself. Stop killing yourself. Uh, this next news story, also all about Nintendo, comes from The Verge, written by Jay Peters. He writes, Nintendo says its next gaming system will release in the year 20XX. That's right. That's officially from <laughs> that's an official statement from Nintendo there. The Nintendo Switch with an OLED sque- screen isn't even a month old, but the company is already talking about some kind of successor to its widely, wi- wildly popular console handheld hybrid, although vaguely. In a presentation to investors, Nintendo hints towards some of its plans in an extremely unspecific way. <laughs> the company plans to continue to expand its business around the core concept of creating unique integrated hardware software products, which I'm taking to mean that the company will, brace yourself, make more video games and video game hardware in the future. No way. <laughs> yeah. On this on the slide, which you can see for yourself, Nintendo also has a timeline of some of its hardware efforts and specifically includes its next gaming system slated to release at an undefined 20XX date. So sometime between now and 2099, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there are no hints as to what the hardware might look like, but it will be another hybrid like the Switch or even just another revision of the Switch. The only image Nintendo includes is a question mark. So, yeah, they it's basically they're talking about, hey, we're going to be making another console. Um, it's just water is wet. Yeah, it, it this isn't really news. But it also is just, it's just such a funny statement to hear like, yeah, it's coming out in the year 2000 sometime. It'll, it's coming out in the next millennia, you know, <laughs> or the 2000, cent- or cent- and then they century. Do that thing, they right? do that thing on TV where they, they uh, dub over it. 2000 this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when they finally do like <laughs> figure out a date. Right. Oh, man. So ridiculous. Um, but now, obviously, the speculation flares back up. Are we going to get the 4K? Are we going to get this or any of that? Yes, yes. You will get it at some point in the future. (laughs) It will not be today. It will not be this year. It will not be in the next two years, but you will get it. If they're developing their consoles at the same rate as their online service, it would probably be about five years out, six years, maybe 10. (laughs) Apparently, we are only halfway through the Switch's life. Like, we're just over the halfway hump. So it's going to be a while before you get your 4Ks, but you will get them in time. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's not much more news to that. But I did, yeah, I, 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 I'm I glad to know Nintendo is looking that direction. That's and basically I, I, what they just told you. And it's one of those things where it's like, of course, duh. But to be honest, we've been talking probably the last... I don't know, year, year and a half, every time a rumor came out about the Switch, they're like, we're not making any new consoles. We're not making any new consoles. So then for them to make do the 180 and be like, yep, we're looking at making a new console. It's coming out in the next 100 years. So we're like, okay. I mean, we we knew that, but you've been so staunch and like, no, we're not making anything else. When, look, you know, not only... Tried this- it's so ridiculous. They <laughs> tried this song and dance years ago when the yeah. DS came out, remember? Remember, they were like, oh, DS is going to be the third pillar of the company alongside the GameCube and the GBA. Yeah. And everybody went, huh, that's odd. If it's going to be the third pillar, why did you put a Game Boy Advance slot in it? Hmm. Getting curiouser (laughs) and curiouser. That's a little odd, ain't it? Hmm. That doesn't seem third pillary to me. They're So, uh, yeah, they're they're well known for saying one thing and doing another. Yeah, so this is another another one of those instances. Um, this 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 article randomly mentions Metroid Prime Four, which I that just made me think. I hope they announce that soon. That would be pretty great, especially after Metroid Dread. Which I'm was still riding the Dread amazing. high. Amazing. Um, so cool. Yeah, Nintendo making a new console. Who knows? Any sometime in the next hundred years, probably. Actually, less. That'd be nice. Sooner. Sooner. I'd like to see another one before before I'm dead. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Uh, last news story here, also Nintendo, comes from VGC, written by Tom Ivan. He says, Nintendo says it's using Switch's success to fund a $900 million development expansion. 
Nintendo has said the Switch's unexpected level of success has enabled the company to invest in Why a new business say it's opportunities. Unexpected? I mean, uh, yeah, you'd think they'd be a little more confident in their devices, huh? That right. Like... Don't ever say that. Because <laughs> that means you thought it was going to do bad. Don't they... ever say unexpected success. They, they thought that they were going to fail. They're like, oh, right. man, that'd be hilarious. The guy comes out like, dude, man, whew. We totally if thought I'm we were going to fail. Of your, if I'm an investor in your pro, in your pro, uh, platform, which I you you and I both are, yeah, I don't want to hear you saying, "Oh, we thought it was going to fail at first. <laughs> huh? We were just we were just winging it. We were just winging right. it, dude. <laughs> it don't worked. Add, it worked. Who, who wrote that press release? Don't ever say. Don't get them uh, off of there. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. In a management briefing following the publication of its latest financial result on Thursday, company president Shintaro Furukawa said the Switch business had exceeded Nintendo's expectations. Okay, so it's not... That's so, much better sounding. I wonder if... So that might have been editorializing by VGC, the unexpected level of success. So Because what he really said was it exceeded their expectations and outlined how the company plans to spend its cash outside of conventional R&D in capital expenditures. Furukawa said Nintendo will spend up to 100 billion yen, which is $880 million, expanding its internal game development capability and up to... And fixing their yen. online, right? Uh, right? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, up to 50 billion yen or $440 million, uh. growing its non-game entertainment software assets such as movies. Like the new Mario movie featuring uh, Chris Pratt. As Mario. Yeah, so 200 billion of that yen went to Chris <laughs> Pratt's pocket. So... <laughs> However, double that amount, up to 300 billion yen or $2.6 billion will be invested in building a foundation for maintaining and expanding relationships and consumers. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> it sounded good, huh? Furukawa said of its plans as a company that brings smiles through entertainment, Nintendo's goal has always been to create original entertainment. In a business with extreme fluctuations like the entertainment business, the basic policy of our financial activities has been to secure cash and other liquid assets so we can continually offer products and services that constantly deliver new surprises. While this basic policy will not change, the Nintendo Switch business has exceeded our expectations, putting us in a strong cash position in these last few years and presenting a good opportunity to reconsider how to most effectively utilize our cash in a variety of strategic and meaningful ways. So the main gist, there's the article goes on and on. The main gist of the article, though, is that they are reinvesting in their current development studios. That's kind of the main chunk of the money is going towards that. And I guess... Again, like, that's not surprising, but in a world where like in the last five years, PlayStation and Microsoft, uh, Xbox have just gone crazy acquiring new studios for Nintendo to be like, no, we're good. We we like our studios that we have now. We're just going to give them more money, more resources. Uh, the one I exception guess, that I cannot believe has not happened yet. Uh -huh. How... Has Nintendo not bought Sega? How? Yeah, that's that's a little wild. That is kind of bizarre at this point. Um, but yeah, I I guess my my question that pops in my head is like, do you think that will ultimately harm or help Nintendo? Again, and this is going to be all speculation. Like, there's no right or wrong answer. I feel like here, but because we've seen X, like Xbox and PlayStation pick up some killer studios and make some amazing games. So, do you think it's, you know, that could harm Nintendo by not expanding into some new development studios, or do you think maybe I mean, hunker, hunkering down and just dumping a bunch of money into some solid, tried and true studios might get the, you know, keep them on the on the right train? I would love to see them and I know it's it's tough because they are the ones that like to they like to do their own new IPs by their own dev teams but I'd yeah. love to see them maybe you know reach out to a few other studios and be like hey we're thinking about making some new IP some new Nintendo IP uh you want to take a stab at it and see what's going on I would love to see more new Nintendo IP um Hmm. being developed i think that's where that money could best be going because one of the big complaints i always hear is all they do is make mario zelda mario and zelda mario and zelda well you know what 
now we're making a lot more than that. How about that? Yeah, you know, they really are. And that would give you a lot more development options since they don't want to bring back any of the dead series that they uh, that they have sitting in the graveyard. We haven't gotten an F-Zero in a long time. We haven't gotten a Golden Sun in a long time. You know what I mean? So, you know, they let the 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 arcade drum people come come put out a game before they put out another Donkey Konga. So I'm just saying, if we're not going to use the IP we already have, let's go ahead and make some fresh new ones, put the development money towards that. Yeah. And Which, if we're not I mean, going to get studios, then we need to work with other studios, not just not just R&D one and R&D two. Yeah. So so you. So are you saying like their current studio is making new IP? Because that's because right now what's happening is they're dumping their money into their current studios. Which so, is, I think not the move to make. Because they already make excellent games. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying don't give them more, but dumping all of it into them, I don't think is a good idea. I think dumping yeah. a good portion of it into them is a good idea. And then using another portion of it to fund new IP development. Out, outsource some, yeah. Right, right. Would make better yeah. sense. Oh, 100%. I, I, again, like Nintendo, they make some bangers. Like, they don't miss very often. So on one hand, I'm like, I mean, maybe this is a fantastic idea. Like, they they have a formula, and it generally works. Like, yeah, sometimes they miss. But the odds have been in their favor a lot of times. So, I mean, if they can dump more money and pump out more games because they can hire more people and maybe even have multiple teams within a studio, like, okay, great. Sounds good. But I don't know. We've just seen some such, uh, such, uh, just creative games and like just so it's just an awesome variety of games come from both Xbox and PlayStation. Now, since they've branched out and brought in new studios and that's just, yeah, I, there's just something about that that you can't replicate within the studio. It doesn't matter how many new hires you have; it's still gonna be X Studio, which has mm-hmm. usually has a certain you know way of doing things, or maybe even a certain engine that they use, and a certain like workflow or whatever it might be, certain culture there. So I don't know. I think I think it's it's a miss too. I don't think it's gonna be a miss that's gonna hurt them, but I do think it's a miss that is ultimately gonna they're not gonna grow as much as they could. I think if they you know, took on like a Sega or took on some of like, you know, or whoever, like some other development studios, I think they could, they could make pump out some really cool stuff. Um, but, and again, like you're saying, like either making up new IPs or you're doing more stuff like Cadence of Hyrule, pick up some studio yeah, that's doing stuff out. like that. Yeah. That would be amazing. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Obviously Nintendo is doing very well. So they don't have anything to worry about. Like, I'm not worried about them. That's for sure. I don't think they're going to hurt themselves that bad. If they survive the Wii, if they survive the Wii U era, they're fine. They're and good. Like, <laughs> like they survived they bounce that. bounce back from that. They bounce back from Virtual Boy. They'll be okay. Freaking thriving here. They're fine. Uh, they'll be around for the next hundred years to make a console in 2099. They already got one 100 down. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but, man. All right, cool. Well, that's it for the news this week. Uh, now it is time for Super Indie Boys, brought to you by Adrian. Uh, yeah, let's switch over to that right now, see what bangers he's has for us, and then uh, we'll get to the Patreon ad right after that. So let's see you all in a minute. Let's go. Time again. <laughs> Super Indie Boys is back, baby. Freeze. All right, I just want to let y'all know, quick PSA, because it doesn't happen as often anymore, Super Indie Boys is now a bi-weekly thing. We're going to let the trailers rock since we have a little bit more time to focus on it. That's all. Just uh, sit back, relax, and let's get on with it. All right, let's go. I got five bangers for you this week. And I know, I know, I had to give you a little bit extra because I don't see it as often anymore. But hey, I got to make sure that you're put up on game. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Moon Glow Bay is a fishing RPG. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. It's a fishing RPG. But of course, it's much more than that. You play as a struggling rookie angler who's struggling to fulfill 
their partner's final wish of keeping you guys' business afloat. And the best way to do that is to form relationships with people of Moonglow Bay, do tasks for them, get out there and improve your fishing skill by trying to catch the over 100 catchable creatures in the encyclopedia. And you may learn a little something about Moonglow Bay that makes everybody act the weird way that they do. Go ahead and check this one out. You won't regret it. Unpacking is an intimate puzzle game, but not in the traditional sense. Unpacking sees you observe the life of a person through a series of moves throughout their life. You can find out about different things that they love, experiences with people, big life changes. You can see changes in their perspectives all through the things that you unpack as they move. And the story is actually really charming and heartfelt. I would definitely recommend this one. Sticking with our more laid back, intimate vibe, behind the frame is what I would call maybe a slice of life game. If you don't, if you don't know what that means, it is kind of a more relaxed, kind of take it as it goes, we're just living life type of game. You play as an artist who's right on the edge of finishing her next big piece. But at the same time, she's learning to get out and enjoy life and take everything as it comes. It's not all about one thing and it's not all about art. You kind of have to find a balance between the two. And this game is really well done. The art, as you can see in animation, are stellar. Trust me on this one, it's a banger. If you saw what was, what is? All right, so I don't want to ruin the experience for you at all for this one, but let me tell you, Chris Tales is some heat. So the game takes place in the past, the present, and the future, all at the same time. I don't want to say too much more than that because I really want you to experience how good it is and the battle system is phenomenal. As you can see, you got two eyes, hopefully. If you don't, let me tell you. The art style, gorgeous. The animation, top notch get in there and try this one out if you learn from the past and act in the present you can rewrite the future. I know, I know, I know. I talk about this one every week, but I really, really want to hammer it home. I need more people to play this game, dude. The Artful Escape is so freaking good. 
It's about a, it's not even a quarter life crisis because he's still a young man, but it's about a guitar player, a musician who is struggling with his identity in the face of who people, who he thinks people want him to be and the person that is really the true him deep down on the inside. The game is gorgeous. The voice acting is excellent. It's even got a couple of little hidden cameos here and there. I'm not gonna spoil that for you. But the visuals, as you can see, are out of this world. I've never seen anything like this in the game before. This is definitely in my personal top three for the game of the year this year. And that is very high praise considering what's come out. Do not sleep on this game. Go and check it out. there you have it another week in the can that's right you have five bangers something for everybody across the board if i don't see you next week a couple weeks i'll see you soon don't worry but these indies will keep you busy and as always play more indies be good to each other i'm out peace all righty we're back thanks adrian for another lovely uh, uh, a little uh, super indie boys there. There's some that was at Chris Chris Tales. That one looks crazy, crazy. Yeah, they're uh, all great. <laughs> I've never heard of that one, so I don't. It's on Game Pass. One you got no excuse. Got no excuse. Game Pass literally takes all excuses away, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing because <laughs> I don't have enough time to play the games I already want to play, and I already have, and now there's hundreds of more that I have to play. Um, but thanks for that. Uh, now. It is time for our Patreon ad. This is a part of the show where I tell you to go over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys if you can, uh, would you kindly, and uh, go uh, check out some of the tiers that we have over there. Starting at just a buck a month. You can support us there and get episodes early and ad free, such as this one. If you're missing the live recording, the live stream recording on Monday nights, uh, then you could get this right after that. Pretty much I jump in, edit it, export it, send it out to you guys uh, before everyone else who gets it on Wednesday. So go support us at just a buck a month early and ad free so you don't have to listen to this part. And uh, same thing with the book club. You get it two months early you know you get it right when it goes hot and you don't have to listen to the ads there as well so hey think about it just a buck five dollars if you really love what we do and want to support us just a little bit more we have some higher tiers there like five dollars a month where you'll also get show notes early so you can see what we're going to be talking about in the show leave your own question comments concerns right on the doc that we use to to run the show and uh yeah comment on news stories uh, talk about what we're playing, that type of thing. So sports of five bucks a, a month or higher and you get that. Ten bucks, you're a sponsor. You get the shout out on the show just like, uh, you know, uh, Julie Bates and Mama Mare do each and every week. Uh, so shout out to you awesome people out there. And then we got our producer tier, $15 a month, just like uh, Toby Dalton and uh, uh, quote Jomo over there. He, uh, they support us at that per Patreon producer tier where they get to pitch us segments, be our bosses, t you know, kind of try they do their best to keep us in line uh or i mean i feel like sometimes we, we're having to keep kajoma in line he, he gets a little crazy sometimes gets a little crazy kajoma watch that's what we gotta yeah. do we gotta kajoma be on watch. kajoma watch <laughs> but uh yeah the tall tales of jj that's uh courtesy of uh of kajoma there so yeah uh it's 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 fun it's fun having you guys to collaborate with and kind of work with and bounce ideas off of so that's what that producer tier consists of 15 bucks a month and you can help us uh, kind of make the show and uh, be a part of it while also tremendously helping us out and helping us make better products. And remember, we have a goal on our Patreon. If we can hit 100 bucks a month of support, then we will put out a third show. That's right. Extra podcast. We have Super Gamer Boys. We have Super Gamer Book Club. And we will put out third podcast, Super Later Boys. 
uh, name still pending, but I mean, that's pretty much what we call it at this point. Uh, yeah. So if you want that third show to come out, that awesome, you know, just kind of chit chat talk show support us over there, hundred bucks a month. If you can get us up to that level, just bump up, bump, bump, bump us up. We're getting close. <laughs> then, uh, that would be fantastic. We'd very much appreciate that. And remember if you're watching live here on Twitch on Monday nights or anytime throughout the week, if you catch us streaming, uh, you can use your Amazon prime subscription to use Twitch prime, which gets you free sub every month cost you zero dollars we get five bucks so go ahead down there at the bottom of the screen give us a follow subscribe use that free sub and that helps us out a lot and you get some sweet emotes to use around twitch so thank you all so much and uh let's get back to the show all righty uh so adrian yes sir what you what you playing uh so over this past weekend because i was in such close proximity with a lot of people uh a lot of friends i was able to bust out the old mario party to give it a spin the new one and uh old and new actually uh, and let me tell you, they have definitely captured the essence of the original games. Mario Party Superstars is so freaking good. It's it's that classic Mario Party gameplay that I'm I'm in love with, and it's definitely been uh, tweaked and cleaned up and HDified and all these different kinds of things. And it's a faithful. I'm not gonna say it's a faithful one to one remake. It's a faithful remake of the feeling that you get when you play those original games. So I'm, I'm definitely um, excited that that came out so well. And I'm hoping that they're going to support it. Like they, you know, didn't do oh, for man. super Mario party. Yeah. I hope, I hope, I mean, th- there's I, just, yeah, there's a lot of content there already, but I don't know, getting like new boards and new characters, even because that's what I noticed too. Like the roster is smaller than super Mario party. Mm-hmm. And like Trudy noticed that my wife, my wife and I have played it a little bit, and she's like, "Oh, why aren't like where is everyone? Why isn't there as many people?" I'm like, "Well, this is this is based more on the original ones. Like this is kind of it. This is the cast, as far as I understand." So, yeah, hopefully they add more characters and boards and in mini games stuff like that. Be fun, but yeah, it's 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 a really fun one. You are 100 mm-hmm. percent spot on with that. And then to gear myself up for Friday and to be able to take it on the go with me. Uh, I've been playing a little GTA uh, Liberty City Stories on that old PSP, and it is still a technical marvel and achievement that they were able to fit that entire game on a UMD. I don't know to this day how they were able to do it, but they did it, and it runs just like a GTA game, a mainline GTA game would. Um, So super impressive, and I am now more ready than this Friday, which... I guess I should elaborate that the remastered GTA trilogy comes out. Uh, I am more ready than ever for that. So give it to me. Put it in my veins. I need it. Yes, dude. Yeah, I I totally forgot that was happening so soon. For some reason in my head, it was happening like either later this month or beginning of December. But that's that's this Friday. Mm hmm. OK, well, as you all know, I'm probably not going to be touching that for at least, a, you know, a year or so with my backlog I have. But. <laughs> One day I'll touch it. One day I'll touch it. I'll get into that. Uh, I got to play freaking Kingdom Hearts first. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, which, boy. I, I tweeted that out the other day. I was like, what have I done as a screenshot? I just installed <laughs> one, two, three, or whatever the whole like collection was, that full collection. Uh, I, I opened it, like, it for I opened your tweet first to make sure it wasn't a meme. And then I freaked out. I was like, oh, finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. He's done it. Uh, so yeah we'll see maybe one day i'll get to those soon we'll see um i'll be here oh yes I, now is that something we should stream because i feel like we've talked I mean, about that i feel like we've talked about that but i don't know it just feels like a lot it feels like it feels like a lot to take on like emotionally to play the game and mm-hmm. to, to stream that live to the world i don't know i feel like that might like cause me to to collapse <laughs> <laughs> uh we'll see we'll have to talk about that another time um i i'm i'm very sad jj's not here because why he's just gonna say little nightmares again no 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 because no. i what i'm about to say i played and finished 
The Last of Us Part Two. Oh yeah, that's right. I finally completed. I didn't start from scratch because I had already played like through half the game like last year when it came out. Uh, so I just watched like a little recap video and then picked up where I started. And whew, <laughs> let me tell you, that game, uh, I, the the sarcasm didn't ca- come across very well in the Discord because I think I I said thank you. I I posted a bunch of stuff about how like messed up I am after playing this game. And then I was like, yeah, thanks for making me play that game homeboy. And, and JJ and you're just like, no, don't think <laughs> me. Think naughty dog. I'm like, I didn't even respond, but in my head, I'm like, that sarcasm did not come across. That was, that was there's that was a, like in my mind, it was more of a, ah, oh, thanks for making me do that. Are you kidding? Like, oh man. Oh no, I, I knew exactly how you meant yeah. it. That's why I said, don't, don't get snippy with me. Don't get sarcastic with me. You better go talk to Neil. He's the one that uh, made it like that. No, it's uh, it's I'm I'm conflicted because it, it 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 is a very 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 good story and a good game. Like they made a good game and they made an incredible story that mm-hmm. makes you feel like hot garbage afterwards. <laughs> like I there's a the, lesson in there somewhere. In the last like 10 15 minutes of that game it was like stomach flip-flopping tears like welling up in my eyes like these moments where it would hit me like no are you no what are you kidding like what no way oh man oh gee oh really <laughs> like it was like that for like the last like 15 minutes of this game like man like why oh man it is it's again and i know that doesn't sound like a good thing but it was. It's it was a great thing. It was a good game with a good story that just, it's not. It broke you. Don't expect happily ever after. That's for sure. Which, I mean. Not from if, this if, series, no. If, you've, if you played the first one, you already know that. But, yeah. It was rough. Uh, I'm glad I never have to play it again. <laughs> uh, but everyone should go play it because it, it is it is really good. Uh, so I actually played it through. It's on PlayStation now, but only until like January or something like that. So that's what the other reason I was like, I just got to beat this before it goes away. I was going to say, you better get your hours in. Because I've already bought it once on disc, but I have the digital PS5, so I can't put the disc in. So I was like, okay, I got to do it through PlayStation because you can install PS4 games. So right. you don't have to stream it, even though it's on PlayStation now. So I installed it, played it, played flawlessly. Fantastic. And uh, whew, yeah, crazy game. The other game I've been playing, Deathloop. Now, this game, I I was not super excited about beforehand. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of those where I kind of picked it up because I was like, uh, I think it dropped on sale just for, was it? I, I, don't, I don't remember now. I feel like it dropped a couple bucks like for with a PlayStation Plus account. Like you got like a little bit of a discount for some reason. And I was right. like, OK, it just came out. I'm trying to put together a list for game of the year. And I want to make sure I play as many games as, as possible within reason, you know, without like breaking the bank. So I'm like, OK, you know what? Well, it went on sale a little bit. Let's check this out. And let me tell you, this has been a roller coaster. Deathloop's a roller coaster. Now, I started out really enjoying it. Uh, it's a really cool concept. I mean, we've all seen the trailers. They trailered us to death with it. Um, <laughs> you play through a mission, like you play through a day and you either survive long enough to go to sleep, which is still just resets or you die and it resets. So you're just doing the same day over and over and over and over again. Um, until you make it all the way out. Until you make it all the way out. And so the premise of the game, very simple, but the story is actually really interesting. The characters were pretty interesting too. That they started introducing, it's like, okay, this is this is neat. This is cool. The world's neat, um, but it was interesting. Around like the I don't know how many hours I've played, but let's just say like the ten or fifteen hour mark. I'm like, okay. Uh, at this point, it's just kind of it, it turned into just like grinding. It went from like, oh, you're getting story to like, oh, now I need to do these like missions or right. I, forget, I forget what they call them, but kind of like these leads essentially to figure out, okay, to, 
because ultimately, the, the, basically, the story of the game is you just planning your attack, you living out certain moments in order to see, like, mm-hmm. well, I'm not going to go that way because I'll die. I'll go this way. Um, and there, and there's like a diagram that you're like slowly filling out. Think of like a like a chart that you see, like a with the know, overlap. The, the the thing that that pops in my head is like Detroit Become Human with like all the different endings. That type oh, of thing, yeah, 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 that yeah, type yeah. of thing, but it's not showing you all the different endings. It's it's kind of showing you progression. Like, okay, that didn't work. Okay, yep, this this this. Like, try this thing. Here's the next mission. Here's the next mission to kind of progress the story. And then yeah, it gets to a point where like, okay, now we need to upgrade some of the weapons and stuff like that. And it's just like, okay, let's move on to the story. I want to know what happens. I've lived this day a thousand times. Like I'm done dying. <laughs> I'm done repeating. Let's figure this out. But then literally today uh like tonight before we started recording i was playing a little bit and i hit a point i was like oh okay cool like i'm finally at the point where i think i'm doing my final day unless it, unless it's a twist that's the thing i don't know i'm at this weird point where i'm like okay every i have my plan i'm going forward with it let's see if like i now that that's that's what's going through my brain right now is nope. and, and again this i don't think i i feel like that doesn't really spoil anything because i mean uh, lots of games do that they'll right know, hades did that to me spoilers i you know we talked about in the book club but if you think you're done and you're not done so now i'm oh, just like buddy i'm just we like got a challenge for you yeah so for me it's just like oh man like am, am i actually getting out or is it gonna repeat like is it gonna do like what so many games before it have done <laughs> so oh man it's which it so now it's good now the coaster's back up and i'm enjoying it so there you go there's my kind of informal review because i've only been playing it okay. just i started it over the weekend um and uh yeah so we'll see once i finish it up and i have some time to digest it hopefully i'll have more more things to say about it but yeah it's 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 an interesting game but yeah like i said it definitely has a big lull in the middle there where it's like whew, okay let's get going <laughs> gotcha but yeah all right well, that's it, I think, for today's show. Um, thank you all so much for listening and watching uh, over at twitch.tv slash the Super Gamer Boys, over at uh, youtube.com slash Super Gamer Boys, uh, over at podcast services around the globe. Remember, you can support us over at patreon.com slash Super Gamer Boys if you really love what we do and you want to get some sweet per- perks to uh, mm, excuse me, um, help us out there and you know you get some stuff in return. Remember, sgbstore.com. You can support us by picking up some cool merch. We got T-shirts. We got coffee mugs. We got stickers. I love my coffee mug so much. I use that thing every day. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, remember to rate and review us wherever you can over on your podcast services on YouTube. Please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. That helps us tremendously. And leave a comment on the video. If you're watching on YouTube, or even if you're not, if you can run over the YouTube you know, channel right now, bring up the episode, <laughs> leaving comments and likes is what's going to help, you know, bring more traffic to our channel. So do that type of stuff. Leave the reviews on podcast services. Make sure you're following us here on twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys. And, uh, yeah, help us grow, help us make this thing huge, uh, super gamer Twitter and Instagram at super gamer boys, facebook.com slash super gamer boys. I'm over on Twitter and Instagram at G Morlang. Adrian, where can they find you at? They can find me any and everywhere at Homeboy. And uh, JJ, you don't need to worry about him. They can't find him anywhere. Yeah, you can't find him anywhere because uh, Santa picked him up and took him back. Uh, I, th- I think he's going to, you know, for hurting his reindeer, I'm sure he's mm-hmm. gonna have to, there's going to be some penalty, some punishment that he has to kind of, you know, withstand up in the North Pole. So don't you worry. I'm working might not, on it. We might not see him for a while. Might not see him for I'm a while. I'm working on it. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all I got for the show. That's it. I don't know what to do now. Normally, this is JJ's job. Yeah, he normally does the uh, the outro, but that's too bad because he's not yeah. here. He sucks. I'm Juicy JJ. So, he's Cutie Guerra. He's your, your, your cool guy, homeboy. Adorable we're, something, something, something. Yeah, we're the Super Gamer Boys. And we will catch you on the flippity flap. JJ sucks. Woo! Woo! Yeah, back to hashtag JJ sucks. I love this. <laughs> I love this train. Bring it back. All right. See you.